one of, one of the nice things about uh, uh, Jack Nicholson, I think, is uh, is the variations of experience that he seems to to represent. Not necessarily on film. I mean, on film, what he's done is is obvious. But uh, we were just talking before the before the break about about optimism and how you were telling me that that you are sometimes a difficult person to stimulate in terms of being optimistic or alive. Slow to inspire, you know, or, or need inspiration more than the average person, I think. How, how does that affect you as an artist? I mean, it doesn't, doesn't an artist have to be constantly inspired and turned on, you know? Uh, no, not constantly, I don't think. I mean, at least I'm not, you know. A uh, certain amount of it is inspiration and a certain amount of it is... Uh, uh, like any other job, it's the craft of the job. Mm -hmm. The inspiration is, uh, <laughs> you know, comes from outside. I mean, you couldn't live on things coming from outside all the time. In, in a way, in a way, don't you believe that everything, you know, is self-emanating? That it all comes from yourself? Self-emanating? Self-emanating. Or don't you believe that? Well, I think that everything passes through a, a self. You know, that that it's like a relay station of. Uh, of information, the self. But I mean, I think it's like being passed and communicated back and forth between the audience, uh, which is really producing the environment which the, the person, the artist, or whatever you call them, is drawing on. And then, that's in, that's an interesting phrase. You see, it's it's a relay station of information, which yeah. is to apply the. It's shaped by yourself. That's what gives it configuration. But basically, you're drawing on the same total reality that everyone else is. You. You take it in and you send it out again in a different form. You, uh, that's the way I've always viewed it. Anyway, it may not be right. You know, I don't. It's not like a religious belief or anything <laughs> like that. But I, as I, as I'm working, very often it's how I get past negative things. You know, I accept it into me when it comes to me through the work and assume care about it. But when I'm working, that's the way I think about it. Oh, this is a certain kind of thing. I've encountered this before while working. This, this bad feeling, uh, I think I'll just go with it in the work. I Let see. it be the work, you know. It, it, do you make a distinction between your, your work and your life, your activities? I, is your work an extension of yourself, or is it divorced from yourself, consciously? Well, I, there, I mean, I try and make certain uh, uh, divorcements, uh, from, you know, of my work for me because of uh, the particular profession or work that I do, uh, everything about it is against that. So from within, I try and keep some balance. In other words, they con the, the average person who views a film assumes much of what you represent as you. And, and of course it is, mm -hmm. but I'm just talking about dealing with the tendency to make you into that. That's all of you. I see. And, and then so just inwardly I, I lean the other way against it because I recognize it to be a very big external symptom of the kind of life I'm living. M most of the people, no doubt, listening to us right now, this is KBBC in Pasadena. Um, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> know you um, as th as the guy in, in, in Easy Rider, of course, and and the guy in uh, Five Easy Pieces. How right. divorced from you, Jack Nicholson, the person, are you from those two characters? I, I know that the characters are, of mm -hmm. course, different from each other, but how much of of you do we know from watching those two films? Well. Uh one of the things that I cite in any character, this is just a simple acting thing, that I, it's a learned thing, I learned it in an acting class, is what's the, the tragic flaw of a character. In other words, most plays are written around a lot of plays and, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of literature are written around this concept. And in a character, you have the option of objectivity and you can, you can view it and see the tragic flaw of the character. And it's one of the things that I most focus in on articulating, uh, you know, by implication or explicitly. Uh, you don't have that objectivity about yourself. Do you know I what see. I mean? In other words, I have a certain, I feel like one generation over the character, even though I try and fill it up with myself from moment to moment, you know, the feeling aspect of a human being. I have taken, you know, sort of a license of objectivity. Oh, this is what makes this character... Uh, you know, move toward uh, a tragic ending if it's a tragic, mm -hmm. you know, if it's that kind of thing.
So, so in essence, you have the the degree of control over the characters that you play. Right. Sure. And you don't and you don't feel that you have that over. Uh, I don't. I I don't think so. What's What's happening with? Um, I don't. I, I told you I didn't want to talk about films and, yeah, and all that's of that. Okay. But I am curious. Yeah. Uh, you are, of course, part of a vanguard of a whole new trip in filmmaking. You know, uh, obviously, you know, and there are a lot of people, no doubt, listening to us who are really desperately and passionately involving uh, themselves in in that kind of media and would like to take cameras and paint with them as they would use brushes. Is it all going to be available to them since now, Easy Rider and and all the others, or is it just a temporary trend, and are we all going to really be going back to uh, the control of the big studios and their kind of motion picture? Um, I, I don't really know about it. I mean, I, in other words, I don't have a yes or a no opinion on that. I can see. I think that uh, uh, as long as there is a, an organized big distribution outlet, you will have a uh, product which relates specifically to those outlets uh, related to the the amount of activity in terms of artists making films I think they already have an awful lot of the really necessary equipment already available to them it's a question of their audience developing really uh, so that their product gets out in a similar way to to another kind of product and then once that phase has been g gone through, which will seem like a very sharp demarcation of this kind of film as it opposes that kind of film, uh, the separation will disappear then very quickly. Hmm. Uh, do you know what I mean? In hmm. other words, immediately w in any art form, when, when someone sees something else that's working for another artist, it, it affects their work. I don't mean they necessarily take it for themselves, but they're influenced by it. They have, they've seen something, and, uh, you know, those kind of... I like that movies are still uh, sort of group versions of individual efforts. <laughs> group versions of individual efforts? Yeah, right. That's an interesting thing. Well, it's like if you, you know, I mean, if you were doing... Uh, uh, you know, a, a big, huge chapel or something as a painter. You know, one guy doesn't get up and paint everything, you know. It's, right. a, it's a group of, well, that's what a movie's more like that in painting, you know, a lot of people. And it really is that way. There's just, an, it's, it's the cliche. I really loved Five Easy Pieces. I really loved that yeah. motion picture. I, I'm, I'm quite fond of it myself. It was <laughs> such, um, such an extraordinarily personal experience. I don't know if it... I don't know if it's just a young man's experience, really. I don't know if it's just a question of young men relating to you, especially that that long trek home to see your dad. Remember? Yeah. It's just. Um, yeah, I I thought the movie was really uh, beautifully written, you know, uh, and and done. And the 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 woman who wrote it, uh, Adrian Joyce Carol Eastman. <laughs> uh, no, you know, we're very old friends, and uh, I think, you know, I think she's really a fantastic writer. And uh, it was, it, it's, it's, it's just more enjoyable to play something that it's not hard work to play. I mean, in other words, if the writing has a basic quality all its own, there's an enormous amount of pressure off the performer, which obviously almost immediately makes his work better. <laughs> you know, what I mean, that, the fact that, that he has less <laughs> obstacles. And uh, she and I are very close in, in a lot, an awful lot of ways. And uh, as is Bob Rafelson, who worked on the story and the script with her, and then took, a, and then directed the film. From there, I have old relationships with both people. So and it is uh, kind of an intimate family experience. That was a sort of a, a very much an intimate family-like experience. But there, it's a, it's a essentially. Uh, Interestingly enough, uh, I feel an anti-family movie. What do you yeah. mean it's not a family film? Uh, much of uh, much of what is limiting uh, almost every character in the film, and that they, all of the characters either are members of this family or are relating to it in uh, uh, family with family intentions uh, are all having their lives limited by that experience by having had the specific experience of their family 
and the fact that they can overcome that or don't overcome it is a uh, negative statement about the effects of family living at this time on uh, many people. And How culture. is it for you? I don't, I don't mean personally, but, but your personal point of view as to uh, the nature of the family unit and traditional family life as opposed to communal life or, or making it on your own. Uh, well, right now I'm a singular person, primarily. Uh, I have... Um, I have very erratic family experience myself, but, I mean, experience that uh, even sounds more erratic than it is, but it's typical of a lot of people that I know anyway, in that uh, my mother and father were separated just prior to my birth. Uh, my sister, uh, who, who's died since she, uh, her family broke up, uh, I have uh, one of her children, a nephew, who has a broken marriage. Mm. Uh, I have uh, another niece who is uh, in her second marriage. Uh, um, you know, I mean, in other words, I, I, it's, it's the predominance of experience. Now, I've assumed probably that's because it's the nature of what my family experience has been like, so I emulate it. Hmm. But now I'm just uh, I'm I'm observing the singular experience, the non-family experience as a person at this moment in my life. How, do, how are you responding to it? Uh, it's uh, it has it has the obvious freedoms about it. I find myself uh, falling into minor variations of family experience just by the nature of the society that I relate to. In other words, uh, friends, girlfriends, you know, all of that sort of thing because it's constantly there. Hmm. Uh, and at times, it, it, I, I get very sad behind it, if you want to know the truth, when I think about it because it does seem uh, like an inevitable thing. Do you know what I mean? It has culturally always been true and always been dominant. And it seems like most of our values are really heavily hooked into perpetuating that style. Uh, I'm sad if I take the strongest position against it that I feel within me, which is it's economically backbreaking. It's uh, it's uh, it causes a lot of uh, illusion. Uh, it it gives people enormous uh, emotional problems uh, to deal with, you know, long into their younger adult life and maybe forever. Uh, all of these things they all have corresponding things. It also gives you shelter. Mm -hmm. It also gives you feelings of comfort, but maybe these kinds of feelings of comfort aren't aren't the best thing for for advanced society living you know living of the future uh the kinds of movement that you know i mean it, it is it would be very hard for instance to take a 20,000 year trip if you had the same feeling about family that that someone had in 1920 that you were going to leave 13 daughters eight sons a mother a father and and all of them living in your pad for 20,000 years all at one shot you weren't going to die you were just going to go away forever you couldn't that emotional <laughs> That emotional inner imprint w wouldn't make it in that kind of a society. So, so is 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 the the single state uh, the the inevitable uh, fruition of all of this? Well, um, is it a question of of all of us resulting in being alone, Jack? I mean, is that really where it is? I mean, I honestly don't know. I'm just wrapping out this I'm side of sure. it for you know. I'm just fine. Uh, it, 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 it's it's a very big governor and a very big uh, element of everyone's living, and there are going to have to be enormous changes in some areas. This is one where if you changed, if you change it, for instance, as relates to overpopulation, start rewarding people for staying single instead of getting married and having children, you will affect the birth rate to a certain degree. But that represents a certain uh, morality, which is in conflict with the, uh, more, uh, a very s strong and tacit understanding among establishments and the mm -hmm. rate at which they'll change uh, in an easy way, a peaceful way. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying. 
<laughs> at this point. Saying it well. Yeah. You're not too into in, into that now, are you? I mean, you're not too concerned with with social trips and political trips, and uh, or I or I don't get that feeling from you. Am I reading you wrong? Well, uh, I'm always concerned with them. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I don't. Uh, I don't wrap them out uh, like I used to. <laughs> Uh, I, I mean, I, I just, I feel like I've gone as far as I possibly could just as, as an amateur in terms of it, I think about it, but, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I feel very on pace in terms of sociology and politics within myself right now. Mm -hmm. I'm, just, I'm alert to what, what, what's going down as much as I can be and in this, in the way which I am, which, for instance, I'm not as alert through the media at this time as I have been. I don't always read all my magazines every week mm -hmm. and, uh, or any of them sometimes. And uh, But I, I watch how the people all around are feeling about what's happening. And so in that way, I'm still concerned a large part of my mental life is involved in it. But uh, uh, I'm, most of my outgoing energy right now is involved in my own work, which has been extensive for the last little period of my life. A bunch of people who want to talk to you. Let's take a few calls, okay? Just uh, move. How am I? Y you're cool. Just move the mic closer to the talk back box because you have to talk into that box, okay? <laughs> and they'll forgive all the noises. KBBC, hello. Hi. Uh, hello. I'd like to ask Jack if there was any uh, significant uh, uh, reason for the name of five easy, easy pieces for the uh, for the first picture you did. Uh. The reason for the title is uh, it's the name of like a uh, child's piano primer. It's one of the early books that you learn how to play the piano from as a child. It's a classic book like Dick and Jane is to reading. Okay, fine. Thank you very much. Sure. KPBC, hello? Yes, hello. Uh, are we on the air? Yes. Uh, a friend of mine has an interpretation. This is for Jack again of the end of Five Easy Pieces, where she claims that his hopping on the log truck uh, and then pulling out of the gas station is, in fact, uh, telling the audience that he's going back home, uh, back up to Washington, uh, and joining his family. Now, I know Jack earlier said that the movie was an anti-family movie, but if he could maybe look, at, maybe look at the whole movie objectively, see if he could make any sense of that interpretation of the ending. Um, it's not a response that she was the only one uh, who received. So, in in some way, it's 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 valid about you know that that is a response that's created by this movie. It was not our intention. He's heading uh, north and out of his uh, dilemma by flight. Right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for the call. Right. Bye bye. Um. Just, just one other thing that, in in any conversation that I that I would have with myself, um, and when Dennis Hopper was here, we were talking about this also. Um, Peter Fonda was on. We've got all the three names in. Okay. Peter Fonda was on <laughs> the, <laughs> the Johnny Carson show uh, two or three nights ago. Oh, he was. Yeah. He broke his leg. Do you know that? He came out with. I a saw him with a cast. Uh, yeah. A couple of week ago. Yep. And he was discussing <laughs> Easy Rider briefly and talking about uh, how he did. Uh, he did not deal with, uh, 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 was it Billy the Kid and Captain America? Yes. As heroes. He said that most of the people who went to see the film, most of the, uh, the young people who went to see the film, related to them in almost hero-like terms. But as far as he was concerned, uh, they weren't heroes at all. Yeah. No, they, they both took the point of view that uh, they were representing uh, certain types from the criminal element of the country. In a, in a nation of criminals. Uh, they both felt that they were playing anti-heroic characters, uh, you know, not to try and explore anyone's psyche, but just in classic terms, that's what they felt they were doing. You know, that's what they decided, that was their design. In how, the did, how did you respond to, to your character in the film? Oh, I, I liked my character the minute that I read it right away. I saw, oh yes, this will be uh, something fun to do and that will <laughs> everyone will like it <laughs> was he heroic i mean uh, the, the young man whose whose dad was an attorney who who leaves no, home in he texas no he wasn't he wasn't heroic i i just uh i liked it uh, i i i liked it because um one of the things i worried about in easy rider was i felt that it might be in 
interpreted as an anti-regional film, i.e. an anti-Southern film. And I liked getting a chance to play a Southerner in the film who, uh, who people would like, not feel it, and, uh, you know, who had an intellect and uh, was an interesting person to know and that you would enjoy to know because I've always had very nice feelings about the South myself. I'm from New Jersey. I'm not from the South, but uh, um, something about it I like very much. And uh, I like getting to play a positive Southern character in the film. Uh, he was very straightforward. I felt I felt like he was again. He was a character sort of out of control internally, but on had a very good view of the outside, hmm. and also could communicate some of it. You know, some he was a little wacky at times, <laughs> but uh, uh, my, again, a lot in the character I could very easily get behind myself. But that scene where, where you were all um, together when, they, when Peter and Dennis were turning you on for the first time, mm -hmm. which has got to be one of the, one of the more uh, delightful scenes in motion pictures in the past five or six years. Were you all stoned during that sequence? Uh, through most of it, yeah. Uh, in fact, the actual acting problem there, since the person gets progressively stoned yeah. during the scene, is to not be stoned during the section of the scene that you take after the <laughs> first take in which you are not stoned, but you are. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I mean, that must be an uncanny experience, uh, being high and being filmed and being aware that the film will be seen by, you know, millions of people. Uh, is that a, an intimate moment being revealed, or is that something that makes the game mm. easier? Oh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I didn't feel that way about it. I, I would if it was at uh, at Paramount, and I, you know, I felt completely out of touch with whatever was controlling the experience, but out in the middle of a field with Hopper and Fonda <laughs> and Leslie Kovacs, you know, I mean, I didn't feel like it was... Couldn't any, be up to No, that. no, it's, it was nice. I mean, it was a scene about it, and... Uh, puts you in the most direct contact with the, <laughs> the point of view that's being expressed. <laughs> Let's take a break and we'll be right back with Jack Nicholson. <laughs> 